Good day ladies and gents and welcome back to War Thunder with Mags. So for those of you who have been working away hard at the World War II Chronicles event that has been running for quite some time now, the first two vehicles in the event have recently become available. And today we're going to be taking a look at the first of these vehicles. This is the Soviet Matilda Mark II. So before we go too deeply into the Soviet version, let's just quickly run over the details of the Matilda Mark II in its standard form. So the Matilda Mark II was a British developed tank used primarily by the United Kingdom during the war. It was designed in 1937 as a infantry support tank, medium class in the 25 to 30 ton range. It was also heavily used by Australia and was given to the Soviet Union as a lend lease vehicle. Its standard primary armament in its default form is a two pounder or 40 millimeter anti-tank gun. It entered service in 1939 and continued through all the way to the end of the war and was a surprisingly effective vehicle. This was mainly due to its armor. For a medium class tank, the Matilda Mark II was extremely well armored rivaling some heavy tanks or early heavy tanks in the time period. So that's the basics for the real machine. What's the comparison in War Thunder? Well, the standard Matilda Mark II in the British tree and the Matilda Mark II, the Soviet version that we're playing now, are virtually identical in terms of hull performance. They both feature 75 millimeters of armor at its thickest point on the front, 70 to sides, 55 to the rear, Turret armor is 75, 75, 75, identical to the original Matilda Mark II as they both use exactly the same hull and the turret is largely unmodified. So what's the major difference between the two? Well, unsurprisingly, it's the gun. The standard Matilda is armed, as I said, with a QF2 pounder. This is a 40mm gun, it has a high rate of fire and it largely fires solid shot rounds, which in War Thunder are not fantastic. While the rate of fire and the penetration values are blisteringly good, you're going to be sitting there plugging away at targets all day long. And while your armor is fantastic in the Matilda Mark II, it's not going to take people too long to work out where that second shot's going to go after they bounce their first, and it's going to kill you. This is why you don't see Matildas on the battlefield all that often. Thankfully, the Soviets are here to make the Matilda great again. You see, much like here in War Thunder, the Soviets didn't like the QF-2 pounder because it didn't fire a big enough shell for what they were liking. So a lot of the Lend-Lease vehicles that made their way over to Russia had the two pounder yanked out. And what better to replace it with than a Soviet 76mm gun. In this particular case, it's a 76mm F96 cannon with a maximum of 54 shots in the hull. So, what is the F96? This actually took me a little bit of looking around. The F96 is essentially exactly the same gun as the 76mm F34 cannon used by the T34E STZ and the T34E Premium. However, there are two, well, three, technically, noticeable differences. The F-34 cannon in-game carries a maximum of 77 shots, so both the T-34s are capable of carrying more ammunition into battle. However, there are two additional changes. The standard base shells fired by both guns are identical, in fact they both share ammunition. However, the F-34 cannon has two extra shell options available that the Matilda Mark II does not have. It has access to the BR-350P APCR shell and the BP-350A high explosive anti-tank shell. Since the F96 cannon on the Soviet Matilda Mark II has otherwise exactly the same shell options, exactly the same reload, and seems to operate in exactly the same way, the only reason I can see for there to be a different gun on this tank as opposed to the T-34s is because they wanted to deny this tank access to the heat and the APCR. And I say this because most resources that I've been able to find that actually talk about the gun that was fitted to the Soviet Matildas mention the F-32 anti-tank gun as being the weapon that was fit. But more than that, I haven't been able to find any mention of a 76mm F-96 cannon being mounted into any vehicle or even any mention of the gun whatsoever. Not that it makes a hell of a lot of difference. You see, the 76mm gun that is fit is fantastic. It is a really, really, really good weapon. 
But more than that, the shells you have access to, in particular the BR-350B MD-8 fuse. This armor-piercing high-explosive ballistic cap shell has an equivalent of 108.8 grams of TNT equivalent and will penetrate 87 millimeters of armor at 500 meters, 95 at 100, or 98 at 10 meters on a flat angle. This shell kicks ass. Well, at least it kicks ass providing you shoot people in the right spot. Just let me take another crack at that. Hang on. There we go. Much better. So, anyways, this gun and this shell in this tank make this tank kick ass in a way that it just never did with the two pounder as its default weapon. The combination of that gun and that armor make this an extremely dangerous medium tank. It's much like a more in common with driving a heavy. However, it does have a few weaknesses. Namely, that. The core problem with the Matilda Mark II, even in its original form, was that it wasn't a particularly mobile platform. It was an infantry support tank, it didn't need to go fast, it just needed to go at the walking pace of the troops that it was operating with. Well, that lack of mobility did not get better in the translation over to the 76mm gun. In fact, including the weight of the ammunition, the weight of the much larger 76mm weapons platform, and the modifications needed to actually fit it, including changes to the gun mantlet, the Matilda Mark II has increased in weight from 27.3 tonnes to 30.8, while still retaining the same 190 horsepower engine, meaning that even if I had seen the tank destroyer sneaking up behind me just then, I wouldn't have been able to do anything to defend myself against it. This tank is extremely prone to flanking. It simply lacks the mobility to be able to maneuver directly on or at the front of enemy lines. The best way to play it that I've found so far is to get into a defensive position that limits the number of options that the enemy has in order to approach you, somewhere preferably where the direct rear behind you is covered by other tanks on your own team, and somewhere where you know the enemy is going to come to, as you can see here, like the centre or town surrounding a cap circle and bury yourself in amongst the buildings. This allows you to keep your tank's armor pre-angled to the direction that the enemy is most likely going to be coming from, maximizing its potential usage and effectiveness while allowing you to just work your gun over the enemy team as they try and approach while simultaneously limiting the amount of flanking options the enemy has to get to your location. In truth, I wouldn't say this is particularly different to how you would actually drive the standard two-pounder Matilda Mark II either. The major difference the difference here is that, well, you've actually got a gun that works, and if you get a shell inside your target at this battle rating, you're pretty much going to one-shot everybody you hit. Pretending that you're a hardened bunker and camping so hard that people are going to start asking you for wilderness advice is actually a really, really, really effective way of playing this, especially if you can dig yourself in on one of those cap circles. But even so, your effectiveness is still limited by your mobility. In this particular match, I'm going to get 5 kills and half a dozen assists, while taking only minor damage and still having plenty of ammunition left. So, why didn't I get more? Well, in truth, it's because my teammates and I were so good at actually stopping the forces from being able to come anywhere near this cap circle, that they stopped spawning at the southern spawn point and completely shifted to the northern spawn point and started assaulting the northern cap zones. And while the Matilda Mark II does have a listed top speed of 24 kilometers an hour, in reality, the only way you're going to get that is on a hardened road with preferably some kind of very slight downhill slope. For the most part, you're gonna be sitting at around 18 kilometers an hour, sometimes into the 20s in order to cross rough terrain. This isn't as slow as some tanks on the map, but it is just slow enough that on larger maps, you are not going to be able to relocate in time. So when deploying this thing onto the battlefield, you have to take very special care in regards to what spawn point you're actually going to use to appear on the map and exactly where you're planning on driving your tank. Because if you put it in the wrong position, the match could be half over or more by the time you manage to get it to a new position to engage in combat. That all being said, I really do like this Matilda Mark II. I've always liked the Matilda tanks. Australia used them rather heavily, and they, they're actually kind of cool. Uh, the Matilda Crocodile in particular is my favorite. However, the one in-game was not particularly fun. The, the two-pounder gun just wasn't, was not good enough. It was painful to use. This, however, fixes the problem, and I am really enjoying playing with it as much as it is a cross-nation vehicle. Because, well, this is one that the Soviets did actually use. 
They still didn't like it all that much. They didn't like the lack of mobility, but the 76mm and this much armor, or nearly the armor of a KV-1, was... Well, it's nothing to be sneezed at. Anyways, ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed the video, and thank you very much for watching. Remember to leave a comment in the comment section down below telling me what you think of this tank. And if you're feeling generous, please take the time to take a look at my Patreon. You'll find links to it in the video description down below. And as always, click that like button, subscribe if you want to see more. Drive smart, drive safe, and I will catch you on the battlefield.